Hi guys, so I recently uploaded a video where I talked about an opinion piece that was published in the Irish Times newspaper written by both the Brexit Minister Lord Frost and the Northern Ireland Secretary of State Brandon Lewis. In it, they blamed the EU for taking a quote-unquote theological approach to the implementation of the protocol. I had said in the video that the timing of the publication was strange as it had come a few days after the European Union had agreed to the UK's request for a three-month extension to the grace period. I've talked about this before. What's happening is the UK in a sense is using Ireland as a go-between when it comes to dealing with the European Union. Ireland has been willing to work as a facilitator on the UK's behalf for a number of reasons. Ireland and the UK have a close historical relationship. There's a massive amount of trade that takes place between Ireland and Great Britain. And of course, there's the government in Dublin who is deeply concerned about peace in Northern Ireland. However, Dublin is starting to feel either rightly or wrongly, that Boris Johnson's government is abusing that relationship. Instead of using Ireland to provide it with a voice in Brussels, it seems that Lord Frost may be trying to throw Dublin under a bus too, along with all those who have been harmed by Brexit in Britain. There's a real frustration with Lord Frost and Brandon Lewis. Here in a clip from an interview Ireland's Minister for Foreign Affairs had with state media, he describes some of the real-world problems the EU is facing with Boris Johnson's foot-dragging. Does well, the EU Commission some... understand, Minister, the sensitivities, I suppose, around the situation in Northern Ireland that the protocol, unfortunately, has now become very tightly bound up with politics and peace there? Yes, and the contribution from the British government isn't helping that. Because every time Lord Frost or the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland says that the protocol is unsustainable, that reinforces in, in the minds of many people who are concerned and frustrated by the protocol um, uh, that, that, they, that the protocol needs to change. Uh, and so instead what needs to happen here is that the, the EU and the UK have got to work in partnership. They designed and ratified uh, an agreement uh, in the context of the protocol. Uh, they agreed an implementation plan for that. The EU has shown significant flexibility in terms of moving away from that strict imp implementation approach. But the British government has also got more? to take responsibility. Yes, they do need to do more, and they will, in my view. Um, but there are limits to what they can do without, certainly in the minds of many across the EU, undermining the integrity of the EU single market. So can I ask you, just to get down to some of the details, we understand that physical checks in Northern Ireland are being done, say, through the use of temporary port cabin structures. Are you concerned that perhaps that, what does that say to you? And should those be made permanent? Would that be something that the UK could do to show that it is committed to the protocol? Well, I mean, there are a number of very practical things that the British government could do. Um, um, first of all, they could agree to a timeline for the putting in place of infrastructure for border control posts. What's interesting uh, about this is that, so we've actually heard, finally we're actually hearing what the hell the government, the British government have been doing. Because a lot of this has been hidden behind messages of the European Union need to be more practical, the European Union need to be more pragmatic, the European Union need to be more flexible. The idea that there are temporary structures carrying out these checks gives the impression Boris Johnson's government is not serious. These have to be permanent because the protocol is going to be permanent. Now, the Assembly in Northern Ireland will be able to vote on this in 2024. It's likely that they will vote to maintain the protocol. But these structures cannot be temporary. They have to be permanent. The idea of using porta cabins is, I, I believe... An, impre uh, an, a, um, an intention on the British government side to the unionist community. Look, don't worry, this is all temporary. In a few months, we're going to take it all away. But that's not going to be the reality. These have to be permanent structures. So it's understandable that the EU is concerned. When the UK said, we're going to put in permanent structures because we, have, we agreed it in the protocol, and then you don't see permanent structures, of course you're concerned. Uh, permanent in, infrastructure, it, you mean? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, it was agreed that that would be done by, by the start of June, and it hasn't happened. And, and the EU isn't saying that, we ha that it has to be done next week or next month. The EU is simply asking for a timeline 
uh, for that infrastructure to be put in place. And that makes perfect sense. If the UK government are asked, why don't you have permanent structures there? And they say, well, we have some problems. Okay, well, when will it be put in place? Under the agreement, it should have been in place now. It's not in place now. Obviously, the British government are not doing their job. So the EU's response is not, it needs to be put in immediately, but please give us a time frame. And Boris Johnson's government is not even doing that. And likewise, you know, the, the, um, uh, what was agreed was that from, from January, uh, the, the EU, in a low-key way, have a presence uh, in Northern Ireland in terms of ensuring that the protocol functions. Um, uh, but they were to be given access uh, to, to data uh, on the computer system that manages trade uh, coming into Northern Ireland. And they haven't. Now, why is this not the case? Why are they not receiving this data? I believe it's because the UK government don't actually have the systems up and running. So they don't actually have the data. Because the, you have to remember, Boris Johnson's government were telling people in Northern Ireland there will be no checks right up until January this year. There will be no checks, even though checks were taking place. So it's difficult to implement software, to implement permanent structures, if the Prime Minister himself is saying none of this exists and will not exist. Uh, and still, six months later, they have no access to that real-time data. Uh, and again, they're saying, look, we, we recognize that there are issues in terms of managing that data, but can you give us a timeline for when we'll be able to access it, as we agreed? So, so what the EU is asking for is simply uh, a fulfillment of what was agreed uh, in, in December last, when, when there was an implementation plan for the protocol agreed, and is also recognizing that it needs to show flexibility in many areas where there have been problems in terms of protocol implementation. And we've seen some of that flexibility uh, delivered this week. So we have seen this flexibility de de delivered this week. The EU have extended the grace periods for another three months. J just imagine this, this analogy. You call a builder. You say, I want, I want to... I want a house. I want you to build a house for me. And they say, we're going to build a house and it will be ready on the 1st of July. And the 1st of July arrives and you go to check this in the building site, expecting a house complete. And you see a few bricks lying around. You see a hole in the ground and you ask the builder, where is the house? And they say, look, um, we're having problems getting the house built. One of your questions, maybe not the very first question, <laughs> maybe the first question would be, what the hell have you been doing for the past six months? But the, the next question would be, well, when is the house actually going to be complete? Because I need to move in. This is what's happening in Northern Ireland. The UK government agreed to implement these checks, to have everything up and, up and running within cer a certain time frame. Now, it doesn't have all these things up and running, so the EU is asking in, in response, OK, when can you have it up and running? The UK's response to that is, give us more time. The EU gives them more time. And then what do, do they do? They run to the newspapers suggesting that the, the person, the entity, the EU that gave them more time is acting in bad faith, is being unreasonable, needs to be more pragmatic. That's what's happening here. So I hope we have a better understanding now of what's happening in Northern Ireland. The UK government agreed to implement the protocol. They're not doing that. They agreed to do many things within the protocol. They haven't done any of many of those things. The EU is simply asking for a time frame, and the response from Boris Johnson's government is stop being so difficult. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?